Hey, calculus students, thanks for tuning in. This is an explanation of a solids of revolution problem that specifically uses the washer method. This is one starting from scratch. Find the volume of the solid that results when the region enclosed by the given curves is revolved around the y-axis. Here are the steps to do it. Number one, you graph it. And by that mean, meaning graph both of those functions. Uh, the first one is not so bad. That's y equals x squared. We can just put in a quick sketch on that. That is a parabola that opens up. It has a center at the origin. That's y equals x squared. Now the second one, x equals y squared, there's a couple of th ways to kind of think about this. That is identical to the first one we drew, except the x is swapped for y and the y is swapped for x. You could consider those, those are just inverses of each other. So you could flip that parabola on its side, or when you realize that sometimes just like tilting your head 90 degrees also gives you a shot at it, or if you wanted to like just to convince yourself you can always go back to a table if we want to find x equals y squared you could this time you'd probably put in values of y that are nice and easy squares like 0 1 4 and 9 and if y squared is x then that means we take the square roots of those y's to get 0 1 2 and 3 you will find out that it is a relation it's not a function because it violates the the vertical line test but that is our function right there that is x equals y squared those are our two functions where is the region enclosed well it's this area right here this little petal shape in quadrant one step one done number two is to shade and add limits. Now we've shaded that region. It's clear it's in that light, light blue uh, uh, area. And then the limits is actually like that's what the where the functions intersect. So they're really a fancy word for intersection points. So where, where are those? Don't always let your, uh, your eyes can deceive you. So double check. You could use the the process of substitution, if y equals x squared and x equals y squared, I'm just going to put wherever I see a, a let's see, wherever I see a y, I'm just going to put x squared. So that means x equals x squared squared. So that means x equals x to the fourth. And in order to, to process this to find out all the points, I would use the like gather all of those equate or those expressions on the right. So that you have zero equals x to the fourth minus x, and then factor. I take out one x, and that's x cubed minus one. Let's see. The only two places using the zero product property is where either x is zero or where x cubed minus 1 is 0. So that means where x cubed equals 1. There's only one number like that. Our intersection points are 0 and 1. And that comes out to be kind of confirmed by the, the graph. And let's see, it's 0, 0, and that is the point 1, 1. That's step 2, shade and add limits. Step number 3 is label the axis of rotation. We are rotating around the y-axis, so where that y-axis is, make an almost full circle, but at the end, put a arrow to show that we are revolving, spinning it around the, that region around the y-axis. Step four, you draw in a random disk. that is perpendicular to the axis of rotation.
Here's what that looks like. I'm going to zoom in on that region and a random disk that is being revolved around the axis of rotation means something like that. I'm going to make it a different color. Something like that. I'm going to do something that uh, is kind of nice on notability here. I'm going to make a copy of this and put it over here. Boop. Oh, not as easy. And take it so that what we recommend you to kind of practice at is um, drawing a projection. So there's that disk and it's being spun around the y-axis. So that little sliver, I'm going to like extend out down below here, and I'm going to find its mirror image on the other side of the axis, which is the y-axis. And then I'm going to pretend as if that is spun around, so it's revolved. So that means it becomes a little washer. That's why it's called the washer method, because there's going to be some space in between those, that region. And we call that a projection. Okay, so we have graphed it. We've shaded and add limits. We've labeled the axis of rotation. We've drawn a random disk and a, uh, that's perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Step five is to label the thickness as dx or dy. I'm gonna put that down here. Um, step five is to label thickness as dx or dy. When we're revolving, it's either around x or y in this case. So, and we are revolving around the y-axis, so our thickness is going to be in terms of y. It's going to be a vertical change, like a delta y. So I'm going to put in a little dy there and over here on my, my, my uh, copy. That's a little dy. Okay, that is step five. Step six is you write an area expression. For the washer. And the, uh, utilizing, or I guess use I'm going to call it big R and little r. So this washer that's made is used, or it's made by a large radius, which is, that makes the large circle, that span. And then you take out a small radius, which is that span. So uh, my big R here is my, quote, outside function. That is going to be... Uh, y equals x squared. Oh, now, hold on a second. It's going to be, I need to, uh, if y equals x squared, then x equals square root of y. I need things in terms of y, so my outside is radical y. And then my small r, the part that is kind of being cut out, that is... the uh, x equals y squared. So that is y squared. I'm going to highlight that because that's kind of the crucial piece. There's going to be a big R, which creates a large circle, and then a small r, which creates a smaller circle. The smaller circle is cut out. So my area expression, if I were to use both of those, is pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. I'm going to factor out a pi, and it's pi times big R squared minus small r squared. Now this is general. For, so for the washers, it is always going to be the case that it's going to be pi times the larger radius squared minus the smaller radius squared. To make it more particular for our piece, the question that we're doing, let's substitute what big R squared is. That is radical y squared minus 
y squared squared. And follow through with uh, simplifying that. That's going to be pi times, oh, square root of y squared is just nicely y. And this y squared squared again is four of them. y to the fourth. Okay, we've kind of exhausted the area piece of this washer and the washer is going to change because it's going it's we're going to like stack up a lot of those uh, all the way up from zero to one so now we can make an expression that says the change in our volume is going to be pi times y minus y to the fourth that's our area and then dy dy is our thickness that makes into a volume and that is just kind of general that's a change in volume if we want to know specifically what the exact volume is we integrate which is using calculus so the volume is I'm going to take a pi out before I uh, of the integral sign because it's a constant the integral of y minus y to the fourth dy and our limits of integration now since we're going from bottom to top are going to be from zero all the way up to one. Whew. All right, we aren't quite done yet. This is now uh, going to use the, like find the antiderivative and we take pi and now let's see the function whose derivative is y was y squared over 2. The function whose derivative was y to the fourth is y to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 1. That means we've got pi times, now I put in a 1, that's 1 half minus 1 to the 1 fifth minus, oh that's nice, when 0 is your a lower limit of integration, that's kind of uh, fun to deal with. That means it's pi times one half minus one fifth, which is one half is five tenths, one fifth is two tenths. We're looking at three tenths pi or three pi over 10. That is our answer. That is the volume of that region. Actually, it's not a region, that's a, it's a, three-dimensional space and so um, oh you know what after our num uh, step number six when we start to integrate that is part seven and then our we have our answer and that's that's a, a cubic units so it's good to in part eight draw the 3d shape which starts with the, let's see, let me study that pedal again. That pedal is being revolved around the y-axis. So it's something like this. That pedal kind of looks like that. I'm going to copy it over here. And to revolve it around the y-axis means there's gonna be kind of a bowl shape that it makes up top. And then there is a bowl down below. So this is kind of like a, man, it's kind of like a bowl, but it's not the type of cereal bowl because you've got an inside like puffiness factor that makes it not going to hold a lot of milk. Um, and as best you can, you add value to show that this is a three-dimensional image. Yeah, man, I'm not quite sure how that's going to happen. I'm just going to maybe add some color to show that that is a um, there's the best we can do is kind of show that there is a an inside puffiness there that is our 3d shape all right enjoy your solids of revolution using the washer method